Hello and welcome to another video with me, Steve England Outdoor Learning. Wild food foraging is a fascinating subject and it's something that I've studied for over 50 years. In the world of wild foods, it can be very complex. And in the press recently, there was an incident where some foragers went out foraging and they misidentified a member of the umbilifer family of plants and they've all ended up poisoning themselves in hospital. So I've traveled here to South Gloucestershire. I'm at Oldbury Power Station and I've decided that we're going to have a little walk down this lane and we're going to have a look at the umbilifer family. See if we can find some of the toxic plants that grow in amongst edibles. Some of the complexities of plant identification is quite intricate and this is where you have to really slow yourself down and get your identification right because if you don't, this fella is going to come and take you away. So join me on a journey as we wander and let's go and see what we can find. So there's two plants in particular that I'm really worried about that could potentially be growing in this are the hemlocks. So there's poison hemlock and there's hemlock water dropwort. Normally the hemlock water dropwort tends to grow near water and I can see in here there's a ring going through there. So that ticks one of the boxes of the right environment that it's likely to grow in. The other one is poison hemlock. So what we're going to do now guys is slow down and we're going to check each one of these umbilifers individually and let's see what we've got here. Have we got the Grim Reaper? Have we got some edibles? What's going on? Well let's find out. Well here we go. I can see a group of umbilifers there just in front of me. So let's have a look and see what they are, shall we? Okay. I don't mind kneeling on stinging nettles for you. What I'm worried about are the two hemlocks, the hemlock water dropwort and poison hemlock. Both have hairless, round, waxy stems. And that's what I've got to watch out for. So in this group of umbilifers there, if I find anything that's got hairless, round, waxy stems with purple blotching on it, my alarm bells are going to be ringing. And that's when you really have to make sure that you get your identification spot on. So let's start with this one. Well, let's start with a leaf, shall we? I'm going to take a leaf off. Just there. Okay, so you see the palm-like leaves. You've got opposing leaves there and one on the top. Now this has got a U-shaped groove running all down the stem. And can you see the hairs on it? This is got this is very hairy. Very hairy. So that tells me straight away it is not hemlock water dropwort and it's not poison hemlock because they have hairless round waxy stems. So what have I got here? has like a very carroty smell to it as well. Smell is really important. And smell is one of your key identification uh, processes as well, because smell plays an important thing. So what, in fact, what I've actually got here, and what I'm 100% confident that I've got, is common hogweed, and it's an edible vegetable. Okay, so that's number one. Next umbilifer I can see is this one here, this little thin one. So what have we got here? Well, straight away, the seed heads look completely different compared to the hogweed. Have I got hairs on there? Yeah, I can feel loads of micro hairs on. This is like Velcro. So this is not hemlock. Even though it's got some purple blotching on there, like that, it is not poison hemlock. This is wild chervil, cow parsley. What I've got here so far, I'm 100% certain that I've got cow parsley, edible, common hogweed, edible. So that's two out of four. Now let's go to the next one. There's another one just here. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Okay, so the first thing that I notice on this, if you look at the stem, there's no hairs on there. No, this is waxy and hairless. All the stems are round and this has very, very clear blotching. Can you see the blotching going through here? Look at that. The flower heads are completely different. What I've got here is the Grim Reaper, poison hemlock, and this is your killer. This is your killer here. So you've got to slow yourself down, and the key indicator for the hemlocks is hairless, round, waxy stems. So I am 100% confident what I've got here is the Grim Reaper, poison hemlock there. So we've got two edibles and a killer. Now at the back there, I can see one more. So the first thing I notice on here are the flower arrangements slightly different. Can you see the flowers? They're not as flat 
as the parsley. And they're not as flat as the common hogweed. You see the difference there? These are more round. So my alarm bells are ringing. So I'm gonna look at the stems and straight away, I can see that this is a hairless, round, waxy stemmed plant. And what I can see on there as well, there's no purple blotching, there's no purple markings whatsoever. And also I can see lines down the veins of the stems, straight lines. What I've got here is the killer. This is hemlock water dropwort. One leaf of this can potentially kill you. And this is what's really interesting about foraging for the umbilifer families, like where I am now. Because in this one meter, I've got four umbilifers. I've got two edibles and I've got two killers, potential killers. The interesting thing about things like this, when you find plants like this, there's no legal obligation for the landowner to remove them because they're not an invasive species. So if this was the giant hogweed, then landowners do have a responsibility to report it, to clear it, but not plants like this. And in fact, the hemlocks are really good pollinators for insects. They're really nice plants, but in the world of wild foods, like I said, if you're intending to eat things, that's when things change. And like I've just demonstrated, you've got to slow down. And one thing that's really important, really important, if you've identified one plant here as common hogweed, for example, never ever assume the plant growing through the middle of it or the plant next to it is the same. You've got to check every leaf, every stem individually. I've got all four of the plants that we collected in this one square meter. So let's just go through them again. So this one, this is your wild parsley, cow's parsley, also called wild chervil, an edible vegetable good to forage. The next one was this one, common hogweed, an edible vegetable. And it is right up there in terms of edible foods, really up the top, a highly underrated edible vegetable. And again, it's covered in hair, so it's not a hemlock. And you can see here, I've got all this, all this here is edible. Chop it up and steam it, not a problem, really nice. Now the next ones, I really don't feel comfortable touching with my bare skin, so I'm gonna put a glove on for these. This one, hairless, round, waxy stems, purple blotching all up the stems. It smells metallic, it smells acrid. This is your poison hemlock. This is your killer, this one. And the next one, this one here. Hairless, round, waxy stems, lines going all the way up the stems smells acrid, metallic. So what I've got here, guys, are the Grim Reapers. I've got your poison hemlock and I've got your hemlock water dropwort. In the world of foraging, guys, you really have to slow yourself down, do your identification checks and make sure you get it right. If you're not sure, walk away. Just simply walk away. It's not worth it because these bad boys are out there. And whatever happens, guys, when you go foraging, do not let the Grim Reaper get you, okay? Take care out there, and good luck.